Today we are going to be solving some mixture problems, and these come off the handout that I will give for the homework, and there's eight problems, and these are three of those problems, and actually this one is number four here, and then over here down below I'm doing number, number five and number seven. So these are the three of those, again, problems from that assignment, and I'll use these as the lesson problems. And so here we have a 50-gallon barrel of milk is 6% butterfat. How much skim milk? Now notice they're giving us a hint here. There's no butterfat in this skim milk, and so we're going to use that concept. And we're at figuring out how much of that skim milk with no butterfat should be mixed to make milk that is 3%. So you see the milk that we have right now is 6%, but we want to narrow this number down to 3%. So that's why we're adding this milk that has no butter fat so that the amount, the volume is going to increase, but the percentage of butter fat will decrease. And so the way we're going to set up these mixture problems is we're going to start with an amount of solution. And from there, we're going to multiply this by a percentage. And the percentage is, depending on the problem, in this case, it's butter fat. And then when we multiply by this percentage, we're going to end up with an amount of butter fat. And so when I do these problems, typically when you multiply by a percentage, you're going to change this to a decimal. However, when I do it, I don't want to deal with the decimal, so I'm going to just leave it as a percentage, as a number. And so when I actually find the amount of butter fat, this is going to be times by 100 because I'm not changing the percent to a decimal. And so when we do this, we've got two different parts. We've got like part one, that we'll call it, and then part two. And Part two is going to be this one with the no butter fat. So that's what we're adding. And then we're going to get a mix all together. And so let's go ahead and fill in our chart here. And so part one is this one here, the original amount, 50 gallons. So we know the amount of solution was 50 gallons. That's what we have. And it's 6% butter fat. So I'm going to times by 6%. And when I multiply those two, I get 300. Now, again, if I change this to a decimal, I'd have to move that decimal point over. And I just like to deal without the decimal, so that's why I'm going to have this. So as long as I do, as long as I'm consistent and I don't change any of these percents to decimals, I will still come up with the correct answer. Now they're saying how much skim milk should be added. We don't know. That's what the question is. So that's where our variable goes. And how much butter fat is in the skim milk? Well, it gives us that hint of no butter fat. So the number we multiply by is zero. And when I multiply those, I get zero. And so when we're dealing with these mixture problems, these two amounts are going to add together to make the total. Same thing here. These two amounts are going to add together to make the total. So it's going to be 50 plus X. We're going to have the 50 gallons, the original 50 gallons, plus the unknown amount of butter fat or of skim milk with no butter fat. And when we do this, we want a 3% butter fat mixture. And it's going to equal, well, when I add these two numbers together, I'll end up with the, uh, when I add up the 300 plus the zero, it'll equal this total. But before I come up with uh, what that is, I need to multiply using that distributive property. So I'm going to distribute this three over both numbers. So think of this as one number here. So I'll put in parentheses, distribute the three over those. We end up with five times three makes 15, and then you add a zero, so 150 plus three X. So notice that these two are going to add together to equal this total. And so that's what we're going to write down next. 300 equals 150 plus 3x. And so when I go ahead and solve this, I just need to subtract that 150 from both sides. And I end up with 150 equals 3x. And when I go ahead and do that division, I end up dividing and I get 3 goes into 15 five times, carry up that placeholder of zeros, so there it is. 50 gallons of X, which represents the amount of butter fat that needs to be added. So basically all we're doing is we are modifying the amount of solution to find out what the percentage amount of the percentage is of, and then adding those together 
uh, setting it equal to the final mixture and coming up with our answer. And that's the way we're going to do all the problems. So our headings are always going to be the same. So let's take a look at our next one. A solution containing 30% insecticide is to be mixed with a solution containing 50% insecticide to make a 200 liters of a solution containing 42% insecticide. How much of each solution should be added? So they want to know both this time. <clears throat> here we just had one unknown. We weren't asked to find out the total mixture, but here they're going to have two unknowns. <clears throat> and so we set up our problem the same way. We've got an amount of solution and we are going to multiply this by a percentage of, in this case, instead of butterfat, it's insecticide. And we're going to get an uh, equals an amount of insecticide. Now, it's an amount of insecticide if I change that decim, that percent to a decimal. So in this case, it's times by 100, just for your information. and then from there, as long as I multiply everything by 100, which I'll be doing because I'm not changing any of the percents to a decimal, I'll still come up with the right answer at the end. <clears throat> so it's the same as before. We have part number one, and we got part number two, and they're going to have a total mix all together. And so now we just fill in the chart of what we know. So it says a solution containing 30% insecticide is to be mixed. Is to be mixed means that we're going to mix this amount with another amount. So let's read on. So we can put the 30% right here for this first part. Is to be mixed with a solution containing 50%. So that's the one that we're mixing these two together. To make, so this is a key phrase here, to make, to obtain. This always tells us that now we're, we know we're dealing with the mix. So that's a key phrase you need to look for when you're trying to fill in what goes where. So to make 200 liters, so 200 liters is going to go in the mix. <clears throat> to make a 200 liter solution, that is 42%. Now another thing you should look for is when we're doing these problems, we're always going to have a percentage that's low and a percentage that's high. And we want to find something that's in between. So the mix is always going to be in between your low percentage and your high percentage or your low rate and your high rate. And so we don't know either of these, so we need to find them. So we just call one of them X. It doesn't matter which one. We'll call that one X. This one, since these two need to add to make 200, to find the missing one, since we have a total, it's going to be 200 minus X. And you see these two numbers, if we add this together, it'll equal 200, because X minus X will make zero. They'll cancel out, so you're left with 200 equals 200. So it's right. Well, we go ahead and multiply across here. 30x is what we get for this part. Here we've got to use the distributive property. So remember, put parentheses around this and distribute that 50 over x and 200. So when we do that, 5 times 2 is 10. And then we just have to bring up all those three zeros, 1, 2, and 3. So 10,000 minus 50x. Remember, this stuff adds to make this total down here, which when we multiply, 2 times by 42, we get 84, and then carry up those two zeros. So when we set up our problem, it's going to be 30x plus 10,000 minus 50x equals 8,400. And so we go ahead and start collecting some like terms, because you notice that the x's are on one side of the equal sign here. So I'm going to collect those. That makes a negative 20. Fix that negative 20x, and here I have to subtract 10,000. So when you do this, notice that I have a negative 20x. So when I do the subtraction, I better end up with a negative number as well. And so i got to do off to the side 10,000 minus 8,400. And so when I do that, i got to borrow. And so I'm borrowing all the way back from the 1, changing this to a 9, so I end up with 100, or 1,600. And then you could just do it this way as well. You could think of 8,400 plus what makes the 10,000? That would be 1,600. And from that point, all you're doing is dividing. Notice the negative signs are now canceling. When you divide by a number like 20, you can just cross off these zeros because it's like reducing it by 10. 2 goes into 16 8 times. Carry up that zero, so there it is. X is 80. Now, what's this represent? X is up here, the 30%. Notice X goes with the 30% solution, so it's 80 and then whatever the units are, liters, 
of 30%. And then from that point, we can go ahead and find the other one. Now, to find the other one, you just substitute 80 right back in for x here. So you just have to do 200 minus 80, and this gives us our next one, 120 is what that is. And so it's 120 liters of the other amount. See, the 200 minus x goes with the 50%. So of 50% insecticide. So there are our answers. Well, let's take a look at our next one here. <clears throat> We've got the nut shop has 10 kilograms of mixed cashews and pecans, which sell for $8.40 per kilogram. Cashews alone sell for $8 per kilogram. Pecans sell for 9 How many kilograms of each? Of each. So that means we need to find both. So when we set this one up, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit different because we don't have a solution here. What we have is an amount of weight. And when we, because it says uh, 10 kilograms, notice it's kilograms, so that's weight, times by a rate. Now this rate, instead of being a percentage, it's going to be dollars per kilogram. So a rate is always a, a fraction of two different types of units. And so in this case, dollars per kilogram. And notice that the kilograms here, the weight here is kilograms. So these kilograms, when I multiply dollars per kilogram times by kilograms, it's going to equal an amount of cost. And that's going to be in dollars. And so we have the same thing. We have part one. And you could be more specific if you want. You could call this cashews. And let's call part two, we'll say, is the pecans. And then we've got our mix of the two nuts together. And so let's go ahead and fill in our chart. It says <clears throat> the nut shop has a 10 kilogram, 10 kilograms mixed cashews and pecans, which sell for $8.40. Notice that 10 kilogram mix of these two things. So what we want to do is we want to write that down in the mix. So 10 kilograms, that sells for $8.40. So it says cashews alone sell for $8. So cashews sell for $8. And then, and then we have the pecans, which sell for $9. So $9 for the pecans. How many of each are needed? So we want to find out these two numbers need to add to make 10. So we don't know what they are. One of them we'll call x. The other, let's do 10 minus x because that will give us the other value. These two will add to make 10, because the x's will cancel. So from that point, just take out, or just go ahead and multiply across. You get 8x. Here you got to use that distributive property. Distribute that <clears throat> 9 over these two terms. You get 90 minus 9x. These two add to make the total. So 84 times 10, the nice thing about that 10 is that you just move the decimal over one space. So we've got our problem here. 8x plus 90 minus 9x equals 84. And so all you have to do to solve this is just combine some like terms and move a term over. So I'll subtract that 90 from both sides. And that'll give me negative 6. Collect these two terms. Notice they're on the same side of the equal sign. So I just get to combine them together. It makes negative 1x. So when I divide by that negative 1, <clears throat> that gives me my value of x. So x is 6. So what's x represent? Well, x represented the cashews. And so we know we have 6 kilograms of cashews. And to find the number of pecans or the weight of the pecans, you're just going to put that 6 right back in for this x right here. So you just have 10 minus 6 makes 4. So 4 kilograms of pecans. So those are the types of problems you'll end up seeing. Next part, we'll have the review problems that will be on the textbook page. Good luck on tonight's homework.